Hi, I'm Jerry Cookson and welcome to another presentation from West Yorkshire TV and our second trip into the fast and exciting world of drag racing, a sport very much born in America but very much alive here in the UK at one of the country's premier facilities, Avon Park Raceway, set deep in the confines of Shakespeare Land and Stratford and Avon. Today's events, the Good Guys UK Shootout number no. 2 will feature the Super Pro Shootout for alcohol dragsters and pro modified cars, the Camaros Unlimited sponsored Super Gas Showdown and a massive entry for the Sportsman Shootout, all gunning for a place in that special 64 car eliminator. Sit back and enjoy the action. But before we get into the thick of the action, and while we review our preliminary races to determine our final 64 cars for the Sportsman Bracket Shootout, I bet there are a few out of you out there wondering what exactly is bracket racing. Well, it's a handicap race which gives the slower car a head start. The amount of head start is determined by the difference in dialing times. One driver may dial in a time of 10.5 seconds and the other a time of 11.3 seconds, whereby giving the slower driver a head start of 0.8 seconds. This means that the quicker driver has to play catch up and pass the slower car and in theory both cars should cross the line together. The winner of the race is the driver who crosses the line first. During the race neither driver may run quicker than the time with which he is dialed in because to do so will give an automatic win to the other driver. If both drivers run quicker than their dialing times, this is known as breaking out, then the winner is determined by the driver who broke out by the least amount of his or her dialing time. So just a little short explanation into what you're seeing at the moment and what you're going to see throughout this tape from the Good Guy Shootout here at Avon Park. A couple of special interest racers to look out for are Tony Morris and Alan Rose. Tony's name was drawn from the advanced ticket holders from shootout number one when he won the opportunity to take part in shootout number two. His ride for the weekend is the German car company sponsored Good Guys 2 awesome VW powered Porsche Speedster. The car ran low tens in a previous turbo assisted guise but now runs normally aspirated low twelves. Plenty of power for Tony to handle. The car's regular driver Harold Dalton of Flat 4 Engineering has been coaching Tony over the last few weeks and both drivers will be taking part in the race in the same car. Hopefully fate won't place them against each other or we really will have a problem on our hands. Alan Rose is one very keen drag racer. He's flown his 306 cubic inch BMC Mini Rosie from down under especially to race in the shootout number two. Alan is normally a koala bear keeper, a Kahuna koala theme park, but has taken the summer winter off, depending on whether you're in the UK or Australia, to see a bit of the world. So look out for this little giant killing entry. Well, Graham, Jeff Martin was just a little bit too eager on the tree, put himself out of the competition, so Kev Jennings automatically goes through to the next one. Well of course the shootout is all about the super pro competitors and here we see Doug Bond on a little practice launch here. He has had one or two problems throughout the event and obviously he wanted to make sure that everything was a-okay but obviously problems there he very wisely pulls off the racing line just to make sure that he's not spilling any liquid onto that uh, traction surface there and uh, hopefully he'll get that car repaired and back round for the first round which will be coming up very very soon on this tape. I'm 
that car with the differential immediately behind the gearbox and a split drive unit away from that. But it's the Camaro who takes the win. So Alan Waller progresses through to the first. Well, as we've said in drag racing, anything goes, and this is a little tidy little matchup between Harold Dalton and his little Porsche Speedster up against that beautiful looking Willis Jeep over in the uh, right hand line there of Roy Cockrell. And of course, this is a preliminary race, and it looks like Roy Cockrell's little Jeep is going to be on the trailer too quickly there and uh, it's going to be Harold Dalton that's going to go through to the main portion of our 64 car shootout. Well, of course, making use of this little practice session is Paul Opposer Hughes with the Outrage 2 VW Beetle funny car, one of a special breed of cars over here in the UK. And this little car featured a 2.8 litre flat four engine built by Autocraft in the States. And uh, recently at Santa Pod Raceway, he clocked the European fastest at 8.12 at over 160 miles an hour. And he's really incredible from this little, little beastie there out in that left-hand lane. And uh, while he was matched up in the uh, cannonball at Santa Pod, he was going up against cars with even more cylinder horsepower in front of them and they, it was four cylinders going up against eight cylinders and he was whopping those left right and centre in a, a three straight match race with uh, Kenny McCormack's uh, alcohol burning funny car and he wound up with that 8.12 and that looks a nice clean run all the way down the track because they've worked long and hard into the night in replacing the turbocharger on that particular car and it looks like that everything's going to hold together as they go through into the final round of the 64 shootout. And it's Bruce Kovacs with the BW Beetle, the fallen function car.
Magazine Dean takes the win with the 55 Chevrolet Bel Air. Well, before any drag racer takes to the line, he has to go through the burnout routine. And here we see, see Dave Billadu with his all-fired-up Plymouth uh, GT, 440 cubic inches. Just going through the motions there, getting some uh, much-needed warmth in those big, big rear tyres he's got on the back of that car. And over there in the right-hand lane, looking at us at the camera there, that's Glenn a Alexander with his Dodge Dart. We're still in our uh, preliminary races here at uh, Ivan Park, but remember me telling you about uh, Tony Morris winning this little ride in this two awesome poor speedster. Well, here he is on a little solo lap of uh, of the track, and looks like he's got one or two problems there. He's fishing for gears inside the car, and he goes right through our eighth mile beams there, wipes out the mirrors at the top end, and unfortunately that's going to cause a little bit of downtime now as our uh, fast safety crew just go out and clean up the uh, the uh, affected area. Obviously there's little bits of glass and of course we have to have that uh, racing surface in super slick condition before we can put anything more down that track. So of course in track racing, any kind of leakage of fluid onto the racing surface not allowed. <laughs> Well, before we move into our uh, first round of the Camaros Unlimited Supergas Showdown, let's just have a look at the top eight qualifiers in this particular division. Don't forget these cars cannot go any quicker than 9.90 or they'll be out for the day and the other opponent will go through. But uh, qualifying in the number one spot, sponsored by Crane Cams, that's Bill McDermott there with his uh, 69 Camaro at 9.929 then following very closely indeed is Gordon Appleton with his 69 Camaro at 9.960 but the first of the British based cars there is Jeff Manny with his uh, Sierra Cosworth at 9.965 and then anchoring the top four there is Peter Lane with his Chevy Camaro at 9.73 but uh, in the number eight spot there is Tony Granston who uh, qualified well there with a 10.072 and was also our uh, number one qualifier at the York meeting which were featured on the West Yorkshire television presentation not so long ago. But uh, nevertheless that is the top eight and we'll go straight into the action without further ado. Well, coming out of the uh, staging area first, that's uh, Phil Druitt there with his uh, Ford Escort XR3i. And uh, he's going up against uh, Gordon Appleton there, Dadlo Gordon we like to call him. But uh, these are two side-by-side uh, -side by runs because of the unevenness of the field there. We've got 19 qualifiers in a 32-car elimination ladder. So all they've got to do basically for most of these drivers is to get to the other end first without putting any reds on the tree or without crossing that all-important centre line. 
And that's Sean Saunders there going through quite nice on another nine second uh, pass. In actual fact, that was a 9.883. Now remember I was saying about uh, if he went any quicker than that, 9.90, if he was in regular competition there, he'd be out for the day and the other opponent would go through. Well, that's Nick Davis there with his 37 Ford. Now, that car we used to be owned by a film star, Lana Turner, all those years ago, and it's still doing credible work now in front of our TV cameras here at Avon Park. Well, that's uh, Jeff Manny there just warming the hides up on the back of that Ford Sierra Cosworth. And, of course, uh, Jeff uh, is returning back to the sport after being absent for about a year now. And he's going up against Peter White there in the other Ford Capri, the up-in-smoke Ford there. And I think both these two are on side-by-side -side by runs. And that's Jeff Manny, 9.958 at 148 miles an hour. So he's not hanging about at all at that top end. Well, that's the pro Zephyr there of Ray, Ray White. That would look uh, at home at any custom car show. And he's going up against Dave Pierce with his 48 Ford Anglia. Well, we've got a little battle of the Camaros there, and that's uh, Peter Lane over there in the left-hand lane with the air-splitting Loudon Boomer Camaro. I don't know why he calls it that, but uh, we'll, ask to, we'll have to ask him one of these days. And he's going up against that uh, nice blue uh, Z28 Camaro of uh, Tony Gransden. And, of course, I said earlier he picked up the number one qualifier award at the first round at York in May. A good even start there for uh, Tony Granston, just showing the way home there to Peter Lane, going through to the next round with a 10.011 at 136 miles an hour. Well, indeed, this is going to be some classic race now with uh, Al O'Connor in Al's Gasser, nicknamed the Professor. He's been out in the States learning the craft of super gas racing. And over there in the uh, left-hand lane, we've got uh, Kev Moore with his jumping jack flash, Willis Coupe. Of course, a car that's been featured in many uh, movies over the years, particularly American Graffiti, and that really looks uh, the part. And he's got a real monster hole shot job to uh, stitch up on Al O'Connor there nearest to us if he wants to get through to the next round. And both the drivers there just bringing those cars into the... Oh, and look at that for an absolute brilliant hole shot there. He really nailed O'Connor to the tree there. But it looks like he's got some problems there. He's twitching left to the right. It goes straight into the armco, onto its side there, just ripping bits of the bodywork off there and just hammers into the armco on the right-hand side there. And we just hope that Kev is OK inside that car. And we hope that the roll cage has done its job our fast safety crew there on the uh, scene in seconds there, just making sure that he's OK. We wait for him to, to uh, climb from the cockpit there. And the door's open, and that's a good sight to see indeed. Kev Moore obviously looking very dejected there, looking down at the ground thinking, what the hell went wrong there? And uh, hopefully we'll be able to pick that up, pick that up on our uh, slow motion replay. Well, let's just see exactly what happened there. And obviously, uh, Kev Moore really had to uh, nail uh, Al O'Connor at the tree there. And indeed, he did put two red eyes on the tree and already eliminated, eliminated himself out of the competition. But uh, it looked pretty good there from uh, 200 foot out from the line. But it started to drift towards the centre section of the race course. And uh, you can see the uh, tail there fishtailing about and obviously the slicks are trying to uh, bounce from one side of the car to the other and that's the moment where he went from one side of the racetrack to the other and he's fighting for grim death there he's trying to fight for control of that car and the car's having none of it it goes straight forward into that armco there rips the armco apart pitches it onto its side it looks like it almost takes the door handle off there and that's probably one of the reasons why he was struggling to get out of the car and uh, oh, you see all the bodywork just flying about all over the place and it's still under power there because uh, you can see the, the back wheels are still churning and, and the tyre tracks are, are still coming up onto the, uh, onto the tarmac there and just wax that uh, armco there on the right hand side 
so obviously it was probably uh, a, a driver uh, error there he just tried to drive out of it instead of just backing off and saying that's it for the day i'm out i want to nail that o'connor at the tree and it just didn't pay off so it's a great shame there for kev moore and hopefully he'll get that car put back together again and he'll live to fight another day well, we'll press on with uh, further action in the uh, Camaros Unlimited Supergas showdown. And this is Mark Flavel over there in the uh, left-hand lane, up against Steve Dowler. And, of course, Steve uh, normally crews for Dave Pearce with his 48 Ford Anglia. And this is his first event here at uh, Ivan Park. But no problems there for uh, Mark Flavel, who goes through with a 10.39 at 92 miles an hour. And completing the uh, first round there, that's uh, Terry Gibbs going up against the number one qualifier there, Bill McDonald. Dermid and these are two consecutive side by side by runs and no problems for those particular drivers they'll go through to the next round Terry Gibbs goes through with a 9.827 135 to uh, Bill McDermott 9.896 at 133 miles an hour well, we move on now to uh, the first group, Group A, for our uh, 64 car Eliminator Monster Bash in the Sportsman Shootout. And we've got Gary Petley over there in his big and red Corvette up against Steve Young with the more traditional uh, dragster stance, the old slingshot style there. And it looks like Steve Young has got it all to do there. And he's got to chase down Gary Petley as he heads on towards the uh, eighth mile there. But I don't think Steve Young is going to catch him in the eyes. Eyes very close indeed. So Gary Petley goes through there, 14.39, and he'll advance through to the next round. Well, this is uh, Steph Millam there with her uh, little slingshot. Chevy powered there and just completed the burnout. She'll just back it up over her own uh, rubber marks there. And one of her crewmen just directing traffic at the front of the car there, just making sure that uh, he's, she's backed up over those big rubber fat lines. And she's going up against Nick uh, Sefton there with his uh, little Reliant Robin powered altered. And it looks like Nick Sefton there just got it uh, in the eyes. So Nick Sefton goes through to the uh, next round at 10.67. Well, this is Alan Golding with his uh, street racing uh, Vauxhall Forenza. And, of course, uh, it's nice to see uh, the little Peugeot 205 there, Rob Molden, in the uh, left-hand lane there. And it looks like it's uh, Al Golding that's going to have to play uh, catch-up this time round. Don't forget all these drivers are uh, have dialed in their uh, qualifying times uh, earlier this morning. And, of course... Uh, they haven't got to go any quicker than those uh, darling times or they'll be out for the day. Well, this is the number one qualifier here, who is uh, Martin Jones with his uh, alcohol-injected uh, dragster. And, of course, this car was uh, imported from the States about two years ago. And uh, he's come all the way from Southampton to be with us here at uh, Ovan Park. And I think he's going up against uh, Neil Grant over there in the uh, Cyclone Wheels lane. Of course, the, the lanes are sponsored by Cyclone Wheels and uh, Street Machine magazine. And there it is indeed, Neil Grant over there doing the uh, burnout routine. Another member of the uh, Bristol Door Slammers Brigade. So uh, Neil Grant is going to receive the tree first. Oh, and he gets a little bit crossed up there. And, of course, is that going to falter him at all? But uh, I think uh, Martin Jones has pulled a, a red on the tree as we look down track. We're looking for the uh, boards there. And you can see the uh, big red eye staring him at the top end. And it's Neil Grant that's going to go through to the next round to meet Gary Petley with his big and red Corvette. Well, this is another uh, uh, race in this uh, Group A uh, division. That's Andy Prisbull. He uh, normally races in the Outlaw Anglers Brigade. And he's going up against that uh, multicoloured uh, Vauxhall Forenza over there in the left-hand lane. But it uh, looks like it's going to be no problems there for Andy Prisbull at all. Oh, it's very close once, once again through the uh, top end there. 10.89 uh, there. So well, he'll be pleased with that and he'll go through to the next round. Well, remember me describing this uh, little mini over there in the uh, right-hand lane. And that's uh, Alan Rose with the rosy uh, Morris uh, Mini. And he's going up against uh, Ray Paul with this 2.2-litre uh, 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 Vauxhall Viva SL. 
And this could be uh, quite a tidy little matchup between these uh, particular drivers, Alan Rose over there and uh, Ray Paul. So uh, Alan just uh, brings that uh, Chevy powered Mini into the uh, beams there, but it uh, looks like we can see a red light on the tree there for uh, Ray Paul. And it looks like Alan Rose will indeed advance through to the next round. So the uh, trip all the way from Australia is coming very profitable indeed. And as the camera just pans through there, you could just see the, the red eyes staring at uh, Ray Paul all the way down the track there. Well, this is uh, Roy Lewis with his uh, little slingshot, calls it the uh, Hot Rod. We uh, can't pronounce our H's when we uh, talk about this particular car. And uh, obviously he's going on a single run there. Obviously his opponent could not make the uh, first round call. And all he's just got to do is get through to the other end of the racetrack. Well, this is uh, Steve Lang with his uh, 29 Ford Model A Coupe. He's got 406 cubic inches in front of him and that would look uh, quite at home at any custom car show. And uh, by side is uh, Carla Pitto with her uh, Melfon Camaro and it looks like Steve Lang has got a lot of hard work to do in trying to catch Carla at the top end and Carla goes through to the next round 13.80. Well, just making a little practice lap here is uh, one of our top alcohol rookie drivers and uh, that's Andy Hill with the ex-Barry uh, Sheevil's top alcohol dragster. And of course, uh, when you come into drag racing, you have to put in a number of reserved runs so that uh, you are quite capable of uh, piloting the car and that the car will react to you. So. Uh, He's just going to just put in a little gentle practice lap before he comes out for the big feature eliminator of the day. And of course that is the Super Pro shootout here at the uh, Good Guys event. Well obviously something just to build on there. just brings in the horsepower very, very gently. He doesn't want to hurt any parts because obviously he's running a very low buck operation indeed. And uh, I know he's been, uh, he's took about three years to get this particular car out onto the track. Just pulls the top end chute there just to make sure that he's working. And uh, he'll go back to the pits and uh, we'll see him out hopefully next time round. Well, we move on to uh, Group B now and just warming up the uh, big rear slicks on the back of that nostalgia slingshot there. That's Mick White, an ex-top fuel car from the early 70s. And he's got alongside him Chris Orthodoxo with that big muscle car. He's got 512 cubic inches in front of him there. And it looks very, very close indeed as our camera picks it up. And it's Chris Orthodoxo who goes through to the next round. Well, this is uh, Phil Topham with his little uh, 1960s uh, Ford console. And he's got Paul Mitchell over there in the uh, left-hand lane. And this looks like... Uh, well, as they go towards the 8th mile mark, it's uh, anybody's race at the moment. And right in the eyes there, it looks like it's Paul Mitchell that goes through. And indeed he does. 11.31 there. And Phil Topham is back on the trailer. Well, this is Dave Grabham with his little competition altered, just getting a little bit crossed up on the burnout there. And his crewman just uh, comes forward in front of the car just to uh, make sure that he's going in the right direction as he backs over his own uh, rubber tyre tracks there. And that looks like it's Andy Holmes in the... Uh, lane nearest to us and uh, the little altered has got to pay catch up uh, this time round and he's really turning on a good turn of speed at the top end as uh, Dave Grabman comes through there but it's Andy Holmes that goes through to the next round 12.45 seconds and that's uh, Ray Turner with his uh, Green Onions 55 Chevy and he's going up against John Evans with the 3.31 cubic inch Toyota Celica Tokyo Toy but it looks like uh, Ray uh, Turner is going to go through to the next round because uh, Evans has indeed put a red light on the tree. Just too eager on those uh, start line there. And uh, next we've got uh, is uh, Chris Isaacs over there in the 48 uh, Ford Prefect. And that's Alec Carter with the Coco Connection, an ex-Supergas car. And that was very close indeed. And I think uh, Chris Isaacs just gnashed it away there in 11 seconds dead. 
Well, this is one beautiful looking car now. That's Tony Baker with his talk of the devil Ford pop. And it's 440 cubic inches of poncho power in front of him. And already halfway down the track is Dave Southworth with the uh, Rover powered uh, rear engine dragster there. As, t as Tony Baker, well, once again, another driver that was just too eager on the tree and puts a red. And uh, we've got a little battle of the uh, sprites with the E-Type. And it's the E-Type e of uh, Lee Morris up against his brother there. And uh, looks like uh, his brother was just too eager on the tree again. And it looks like the Jaguar goes through and indeed does so 13.99. Well, they come round thick and fast here as Paul Wright goes through with a 10.87 uh, with nobody by his side. And he'll advance through to the next round. Well, this is a little Caterham 7 of uh, John Pitchforth, but I don't think John's driving. I think Kevin Jenkins, uh, he was hoping to have his... Uh, brand new uh, Rover powered uh, 220 out for this particular race but uh, it was not to be and he's going up against John Sleuth with uh, well it is an Alfa Romeo but it has got Rover V8 power underneath that hood and that looks like it's going to be very close indeed yet again but once again Kevin Jenkins well that's very uncharacteristic for Kevin there puts two reds on the tree well, this is Mick Hillier there just bouncing away from the start line and he's got the Dark Destroyer there of uh, Martin Harris by his side, another ex-Super Gas car from the States. And they c these red lights are coming thick and fast. I don't know what these drivers are on at the moment, but whatever they are on, they're seeing red as uh, Rob Lees there takes the uh, tree first. And I don't know whether that's Howard Dalton in, the, uh, in that car or it's Tony Morris. Uh, in that little poor speedster because that car is being shared by uh, both drivers there. Uh, I think it could be uh, Tony Morris and it looks like he got uh, two reds on the tree there. Well this is uh, Bruce Copaz with his uh, form and function little VW Beetle. Of course there's a heavy presence in the drag racing world of the VW DRC members and we always, uh, it's always delight to see these little uh, VW Beetles matching it up against the big Chevy V8s and it looks like he slapped another win on that uh, big uh, American muscle car over there in that uh, left hand lane. Well, this is Mick Kemp with his S&K Racing uh, uh, Dragster. And he's going up against Martin Grove with the Wild Pony Pinto. And he's got to get past through the top end there. Has he done it? We'll just have to wait and see. No, it looks like it's Martin Grove that goes through to the next round, 10.36. Well, a battle of the altars now as uh, Faye Fisher comes through uh, to uh, do a burnout in a little 23T uh, roadster there. And, of course, uh, she's been around uh, in the drag racing for a number of years now, sponsored by the Baker Lou Line Garage uh, uh, connection down in London. He's got a, uh, Lee Johnson over there in the Thriller Fiat Topolino altered. And that looks, once again, very close. But Faye Fisher, she was just too quick on the tree there. And uh, she puts herself out. Now this is going back to the real 50s. This is 50s style drag racing with Brett Featherstone with the uh, purple haze slingshot. And Ivan Birch over there in the uh, left-hand lane with that uh, little injected altar. Can run nines, real low nines with that particular car. And he's really got to turn on the screws at the top end. And it's, uh, it looks like it's the altar that's gone through because uh, Brett Featherstone there went uh, out in the early stages. Well, this is Paul Opposer Hughes with the Outrage 2 VW Dream Machine sponsored uh, funny car. Of course, this car owned and campaigned by our uh, sponsor here today, uh, Brian Burrows. And already uh, on his way towards the 8th mile is Paul Hensher with his 460 cubic inch uh, uh, Ford Popular. And uh, it looks like uh, Paul Hughes is going to advance through to the next round. And indeed he does, does so 9.67. And I think uh, Paul Hensher put a red on the tree. As uh, Simon Oxbury there just waiting for his side of the tree to count down in that uh, yellow Maverick. Another car that's steeped in history. Used to be owned by uh, Kenny Coleman up at uh, EDA up in uh, Yorkshire. But uh, once again, it seems to be that all the uh, red lights are all uh, coming on that uh, right-hand lane. There's the alien uh, Ford Mustang goes through to the next round. 
and another one of our uh, uh, VW competitors, that's uh, Jim Bowen. Not the Jim Bowen, but uh, this one of Beetlejuice fame. And he's taking on that Ford 100E there of uh, Wee Willie Brown all the way from Scotland. And I don't know who's got through to the next round. It looks like it's uh, Jim Bowen that uh, advances through. Well, Jeff Manny looks like he's doing double duty because he's, uh, as well as uh, taking part in the Super Gas Showdown, he's, uh, he's having a go in the uh, 64 car eliminator. And that looks like it's Conrad Stanley over there in the uh, left-hand line there with his little Ford, uh, Ford Pop. And once again, Jeff Manny just too eager on the tree, puts himself out and Conrad Stanley goes through 10.90. So we've now got uh, the little Colt Separo of uh, Brian Huxley there. And he's going up against Dennis Hawkins with the uh, Wicked Lady Dragster. And uh, it's Brian Huxley, 11.07. And he advances through to the next round as Paul Bland with the uh, ex-Bob uh, Batten car. Good turn of speed at the top end of the track there. But uh, as he went through the uh, screen, now I'm sure I saw the uh, red... Uh, uh, eyes staring at him there and uh, looks like uh, problems there for Craig Wynn Stanley with his little fugitive uh, VW there as he was being pushed back out of the uh, racetrack well that's a little 55 Chevy there of uh, Mike Howard he should have been up against somebody else there 12.54 seconds and uh, no problems there he's got it to the other end uh, in uh, a fit state so no problems there at all well, this is uh, going to be something very special indeed because he's Nick Stevenson now with that uh, top sportsman uh, Corvette nearest to us making his own little brand of uh, smoke and thunder. He's going up against a little Econo funny car of uh, Eric Humphrey, the uh, ex-Panic uh, funny car that used to be campaigned by the uh, Page Brothers in Nitro form all those years ago. And it looks like uh, Nick Stevenson there was just too eager on the tree, just put two reds on the top end scoreboard as uh, Dave Billadou and Jerry Cookson pulls forward to complete the first round action here at the uh, Good Guys UK Sportsman Shootout. So it's Dave Billadou uh, over there in the left hand line with his uh, big V8 muscle car going up against four cylinders of uh, Hillman Imp Power in that little MG midget. Well, it looks like problems there for the midget, and it looks like Dave Billadou will uh, go through to the uh, next round unopposed. And uh, spots of rain just uh, appear on our uh, TV uh, camera lens there. So uh, Dave Billadou, 13.54, and that completes the uh, first round of our action here at the Good Guys event here at Avon Park. Well, the feature race at the uh, shootout number two, without a doubt, is the Good Guys UK Super Pro Shootout. And you can see uh, what a, a masterful lineup that we've got there on screen at the moment in the uh, top qualifying place with Dave Wilson with a brand new personal best there, a 6.286. But hovering in the number two spot there is Craig Lowe's at 6.675 with the uh, rejigged Team Kaizen Dragster. And he was out at uh, Santa Pod uh, just a couple of weeks ago sporting a brand new supercharger on top of that uh, particular V8 motor. So obviously uh, that particular item is really working the wonders. But uh, coming through into the number three spot there is uh, Lindsay Duca at 6.820. And this, this guy has really been uh, setting the world alight uh, throughout uh, the top qualifying races in the British Top Alcohol Championship and he's really turning on a good turn of speed with this particular car because he only had this uh, car out for about six months out on track but uh, Norm Wilden there in the uh, number four slot at 6.871 now let's just uh, talk about Norm Wilden because his particular dragster is only 350 cubic inches where all the other particular dragsters above him are 484 or 450 cubic inches so he's really working the numbers on that particular car Coming through into uh, number five is uh, Robin Reed with his uh, junior fueler and uh, that's another noteworthy uh, particular dragster because uh, it's powered by Daimler V8 
and he's running on nitromethane at 7.707 he has got this car down into the sixes and i'm quite sure we'll see that later on in the uh, program Dave Mingo is the first of our Pro Modified uh, runners there at uh, 7.233 with his uh, uh, Vauxhall Calibra. Then back to the dragsters again is Steve Johnson with his little motor mouse Super Pro ET dragster at 7.412. And rounding out the top eight is uh, Alan Pacman with his uh, Ford Scorpio at 7.608. Of course, Alan is just a little shade off the uh, pace because he can normally run that particular car right down into those seven zero times so let's just see how the uh, first round uh, is uh, going underway as uh, we go back down to trackside well straight away into the action there that's dave wilson there in the uh, left hand lane going up against craig lowes and uh, both those drivers just uh, going through the motions because uh, they're on two side by side by runs dave wilson just goes through with a 6.635 at 155 miles an hour and craig lowes shuts it off early at 7.121 at 138 miles an hour well, back at the start line, we've got a battle of the pro mods now with uh, Alan Pacman there with his Ford Scorpio going up against Mick Cheeley with his uh, Vauxhall Calibra. But problems there for Mick Cheeley. He was, he was all over the uh, racetrack there at the eighth mile mark. So Alan Pacman advances through to the next round at a 7.554 at 165 miles an hour. And uh, commiserations there to Mick Cheeley, 9.72 at 95 miles an hour. Well, Robin Reed, they're going through the uh, burnout routine with his the little V8 Daimler Power Junior Fueler. And he's going up against uh, Andy Robinson with the uh, Ford Thunderbird Pro Modified. Of course, Andy's just taking over the reins of this particular car from uh, Colin Taylor. But uh, looks like no problems there. Good, clean, arrow straight run there for uh, Robin Reed. And just look at this for a time. 6.959 at 185 miles an hour. We've predicted a 6 earlier in the tape. And indeed he does so. But uh, Andy Robinson, 9.046 at 151 miles an hour. Well, down there is uh, Steve Johnson with his, his uh, injected uh, motor mouse dragster. He should have been going up against Kenny McCormack with his top alcohol funny car Corvette, but they got problems with the uh, transmission and reverse linkage in that particular car. So uh, Johnson goes through to the next round, 7.130 at 174 miles an hour. Well, our next pair of cars to emerge from the back of race control there is... Uh, Brian Thomas with his little paranoia uh, altered the extraordinary Jaguar powered machine there because he's running on nitromethane he's got 3.8 litres of Jag power in front of him and he's going up against Norm Wilden with the uh, Plan X dragster and it looks like Norm faltered on the line there and I'm sure he pulled a red on the tree as he goes through the top end and we see the uh, red bulbs glaring at him as he goes through the top end there so Brian Thomas indeed goes through to the uh, next round and he runs a 9.017 154 miles an hour to Norm Wilden's red light in 8.820 at 153 miles an hour. Well, that's Doug Bond who we saw uh, earlier in our program, and obviously he's got his problems fixed with that uh, top alcohol dragster runs that particular machine on a very limited shoestring indeed. Oh, and just look at that for a monster wheel shot there from uh, Doug Bond up against D Dave Mingo. He's really trying hard all the way through the top end there, and just look at this for Doug Bond, a brand new personal best, 6.947 at 193, just a shade off the 200 miles an hour there and for Dave Mingay 7.761 at 155 for the uh, Hellraiser Pro Modified Vauxhall Calibra well, our last car in this uh, first round of the Super Pro shootout is uh, Lindsay Ducar in that beautiful looking top alcohol dragster there. And he should have been going up against our rookie driver, Andy Hill, who uh, doesn't look like he's uh, shown for this round. So Lindsay Ducar is going to take a solo into the next round to uh, meet uh, Brian Thomas. And Lindsay goes even quicker than his qualifying time there and nearly pitches it into the weeds at the top end of the track. He does a better of a 6.657 at 212 miles an hour. So that was our first driver into the 200s there. And that completes the first round of the Super Pro Shootout here at Avon Park. 
Well, the action is coming thick and fast now as we come into the second round of the Camaros Unlimited uh, Super Gas Showdown. And that's just burning out there is uh, Tony Gransden. And he's going up against his boss over there in the uh, uh, left-hand line there in the Obsession Camaro. And this looks like it could be a tidy little matchup towards the top end. And it looks like Tony Gransden's got his nose in front. And indeed, Tony Gransden takes the win there. 9.988 at 123 miles an hour to a losing 9.934 at 133. Well, this is Peter Lane up against uh, Ray White. Of course, Peter Lane is running the uh, ear splitting Loud and Boomer Camaro. And he's going to look that Pro Zephyr, that beautiful looking uh, Pro Zephyr nearest to us. So both drivers just uh, bringing those cars into the uh, stage beams. His crewman just signalling to him to tell him how much further he's got to go. And Peter Lane there, very quick, out of the hole there. And it looks like he's going to steal this win away from uh, Ray White. And indeed he does so 9 points and 996 to the 122 to a losing 10.044. Well we press on and this is uh, flat top Phil, flat top uh, Phil Druitt with his uh, XR3i going up against Mark Flavel with the Port Performance Unlimited uh, uh, Chevy Monza. Of course these uh, particular drivers have met many times before and uh, they do a lot of racing down at Santa Pod in New York but this is their most favoured racetrack and looks like uh, Mark Flavel there just stole away the hole shot there but uh, it looks like we could have a, a double uh, breakout here and indeed we do as uh, Flying Phil goes through it 9.794 to a 9.779 so it's Phil Druitt that's going to uh, steal away the win there well already on his way there is Dago Gordon Appleton with his Z28 Camaro but uh, he should have been going up against uh, Jim McGee but it looks like problems there for the Vauxhall uh, Cavalier but uh, Dago Gordon Appleton 9820 at 132 miles an hour and that puts himself out of the competition because he's bombed that 9.90 index and it's going to be Jim McGee that advances through to the next round well, that's Peter White on the line now with his up in smoke for Capri. And he should have been going up against uh, Bill McDermott with his uh, horny rat Camaro. But problems there for Bill at the back of the staging lanes. So uh, Peter White advances through all on his own there at 10.002 at 134 miles an hour. And that's Dave Pearce there with his uh, 48 Ford Angler just burning out. And he's going up against Sean Saunders, the guy that spent his super gas apprenticeship over there in California and bringing this beautiful looking Nova back over to the UK to campaign in the Performance Unlimited Super Gas Series. And it looks like it's going to be Sean Saunders is going to go through to the next round. And just look at this, it was Dave Pearce that did it get through to the top end first but he bombed the 9.90 index with a 9865 at 135 miles an hour so Sean Saunders there 10.016 at 131 well, our next pair on the line features Professor O'Connor there in Al's Gasser going up against Nick Davis. And it looks like the Professor's handed the win over to Nick at the top end of the track because we see on the scoreboards there the big red eyes staring at him down towards the bottom end of the track. So uh, Al O'Connor is back on the trailer with a 9.955 at 122 to Nick Davis's winning 10.110 out of 108. And completing the round there is uh, Kurt Hinchcliffe with his uh, Hustler VX490 Vauxhall and Jeff Manny there just stumbling away from the uh, line as they go towards the uh, top end of the track and it's Kurt Hinchcliffe that's going to uh, pull away the win there 10.561 at 97 obviously seeing Jeff Manny in his rear view mirror uh, having problems there to uh, a 10.371 at 113 so that completes the uh, second round of the Camaros Unlimited Supergas Showdown here at the shootout well, with all our uh, super gas racers safely tucked up in the pits, we're back on with the Sportsman Shootout. And it's Group A once again with uh, Carla Pitto and her Melfort Camaro being hotly pursued there by uh, Nick Sefton and his little reliant Robin Altered. And he just shoots in front of the screen there and steals away the win there, 10.74. 
so he advances through to the next round so on the start line there that's Neil Grant nearest to us going up against Gary Petley and looks like Grant's got it all to do on the start line there he's got to chase that uh, big and red Corvette all the way down that uh, quarter mile racetrack there and it's going to be very close we're looking to see there he shoots in front of him but it's another red light there for uh, Neil Grant but Gary Petley there 14.31 and uh, he'll go through and that's uh, Ali Allen Golding going up against Andy Prisbol of course, Golding steering that uh, Vauxhall Forenza there, and it's Prisbal with his little Ford Pop. Is he going to do it? Don't think so, because uh, another red light there for Andy Prisbal, 11.54, and he'll be going up against uh, Carla Pitto in the next round. Well, just being whirled back into the uh, water box area there. I don't know whether he's got a silent motor there or not, but uh, that's Roy Lewis with the. Uh, Hot rod slingshot. Oh, well, there's the reason why we've got a little errant plastic bag who has decided he wants his own little private drag race down the track all on its own. So it uh, looks like our safety crews are just going to uh, retrieve that and then we'll be uh, back on the action. And the action is coming to us once again. It's Roy Lewis going up against Alan Rose and the little slingshot has got to chase that uh, little Chevy-powered uh, Mini all the way from Australia, is he going to do it? We'll have to wait and see. And it's Roy Lewis that just pokes those little bicycle wheels in front of him. 10.39 and puts Alan Rose back on the trailer. Well, this is uh, Ray Turner. And uh, we go through into Group B now. And this is Ray Turner going up against Paul Wright. So Ray Turner just uh, brings up the front wheels on the Green Onions uh, Chevy Camaro. I, don't, I just don't know why he calls it that, but uh, it's a, certainly a credit to uh, the paint job there. But it's uh, Paul White that just nicks away the win in the eyes there, 11.29. And this is Chris Isaacs with his uh, 48 uh, Prefix. And he's going up against Lee Morris there with a the little Super Sprite. And Chris Isaacs has got a lot of work to do with that Super Sprite in front of him. And just look at the horsepower from that big V8 muscle car there. 10.92 there for Chris Isaacs. A little bit of smoke there at the top end, but uh, nevertheless, uh, no problems. As uh, Paul Mitchell with his uh, Buick uh, GS going up against uh, Chris Orthodoxu with his uh, marveled uh, Dodge Dart there. And uh, that uh, 512 cubic inches there just powers him through to the next round. Well, this is uh, Andy Holmes now with uh, Dave Southworth uh, over there in the uh, left-hand lane and uh, Andy Holmes, is he going to uh, keep that win? And uh, Dave Southworth just nicks it through to the uh, next round so uh, that completes Group B as we uh, progress on to uh, Group C now. Of course, we're uh, whittling the cars down from our uh, 64 to 32. And that's uh, Paul Hughes there with the Outrage 2 VW Beetle. And he's got Martin Harris there, the Dark Destroyer SS Nova. And he's got to chase him down to the top bottom end of the track. And it looks like... It's going to be Paul Hughes that's going to go through to the next round because Martin Harris there was just too eager on the tree. Another 9.60 uh, for Paul Hughes. And that's Brett Featherstone with a uh, little slingshot uh, dragster going up against Harold Dalton. But it looks like Brett Featherstone has pulled a red on the tree. These drivers, I just don't know what they're uh, doing at the moment because they're anticipating that uh, green too soon and they're eliminating themselves out of the uh, competition as uh, John Sleeth comes forward with his uh, little rover-powered Alfa Romeo against Martin Grove's uh, Pinto there. And it's going to be Martin Grove there just steals away the win at the top end, 10.34 over John Sleeth. Well, we've now got on the line Faye Fisher going up against uh, Rob Brown. And it looks like the little altered has got to uh, play catch up this time round on that uh, big NASCAR type 60s stocker over there in the left hand lane. And it's Faye Fisher that goes through to the next round. 10.76. And she'll meet Harold Dalton there in the semi finals. So it's uh, Simon Oxbury with the little Maverick. 
and he's got Conrad Stanley against him there and it's going to be Simon Oxbury with another 11.80 and Conrad uh, Stanley's back on the trailer with that forward pop. Uh, so Dave Billadu now comes forward with his uh, all fired up uh, Plymouth GT 440 cubic inches pounding down the track and he should have been uh, against uh, Paul Bland with his uh, little Fiat Topolino but I don't see him anywhere in the picture and that's the reason why he's pulled a red and he's decided not to hurt any parts in trying to chase him down the track so it's Dave Billadu that goes through to the next round as uh, the little 55 Chevy there pulls away from uh, Brian Huxley and it's Brian Huxley with the little Colt Separo and of course that's Mike Howard there over in the uh, right hand lane there but it looks like it's going to be uh, Brian Huxley that advances through and indeed he does so 11.99 as uh, Eric Humphrey with the uh, Kano uh, funny car going up against the wheel standing uh, Beetlejuice VW of uh, Jim Bowen and of course that uh, rear wing creating a lot of downforce on the on the back of that uh, little VW Beetle and indeed it's Jim Bowen that goes through to the next round and he'll be meeting uh, Simon Oxbury next time round so this is Alan Rose now and uh, he's going up against Roy Lewis in a little bit of a rerun of the uh, racing group A but it looks like uh, Alan Rose is going to be back on the trailer and back down to Australia sooner than he thought because he's uh, anticipated the reds, to, the greens too soon and put a red on the tree there and Roy Lewis is going to go through to the next portion of the Sportsman Shootout here at the park. Well, this is another rerun from the second round of Super Gas between Peter Lane and Ray White. And uh, it looks like it's Peter Lane has poked his nose out in front in that Z28 Camaro. And he does hold that position. So it's going to be Peter Lane that's going to advance through to the quarterfinals of Supergas. And now sooner, as I said it, the quarterfinals are on our screen because it's uh, Sean Saunders with uh, Peter White with the Up in Smoke uh, Capri as they head on down towards the uh, bottom end of the track. And it's Sean Saunders there that goes through 9.978 at 129 miles an hour to a losing 10 point is 035 as uh, Phil drew it there hikes the front wheels in the air with the uh, Kurt Hinchcliffe by his side and it's going to be flat top Phil that's going to uh, steal away the win there 10 point is 05 to 127 to uh, a losing 10.138 well this is uh, Nick Davis uh, newest rookie to uh, super gas sporting that's a very pretty looking 37 Ford and of course that car used to be owned and campaigned by uh, Tony Rhodes who has now graduated up into uh, Pro Modified but uh, as I said earlier in the program this particular car was owned by uh, film star Lana Turner and he's going up against uh, Jim McGee who uh, locked through the uh, previous round against Gordon Appleton but it uh, looks like Jim's got some problems this time round and it's going to be Nick Davis that goes through 10.133 at 122 miles an hour. Well we now move on to our uh, semi-finals in the Super Pro shootout here at the park and you've just seen in shot there Brian Thomas with the uh, nitro burning Jaguar powered paranoia altered and he's going up against Robin Reed there with the uh, Daimler V8 uh, nitro burning Julian Fielder and it looks like paranoia has got some problems uh, launching away from the line there but no problems at all for Robin Reed at the top end of the track but uh, he anticipated the reds too soon and uh, no times of speed for any of those cars well this is uh, Craig Lowe's uh, coming forward from the uh, staging area just bringing the Hertfordshire BTR Total Schlegel UK sponsored top alcohol dragster into the uh, water box area as we hear uh, his opponent Steve Johnson uh, burning out uh, in the uh, opposite lane there so uh, Steve in the uh, motor mouse injected uh, Chevy dragster there just waiting patiently for uh, Craig to reverse back but it looks like one of our uh, officials has spotted something uh, dangling on the uh, side of the car it looks like a loose wire from uh, one of the dual magnetos on the side of that car but uh, the crew man just says uh, look no problem there guy we want to get it down to the other end of that track first so uh, Craig Lowe's there sitting in the hot seat 
launches very very uh, cleanly away from the line and uh, all that V8 horsepower there showing a good race there to Steve Johnson at the top end of the track and it's going to be Craig Lowe's that goes through to the next round 6.83 at 192 miles an hour to a losing 7.498 at 175 miles an hour well, our next pair of cars in the quarterfinals for the uh, Super Pro shootout will feature this man, Dave Wilson, the guy that uh, everybody's uh, trying to catch at the moment. And uh, in the opposing lane, it'll be Alan Packman with his uh, beautiful looking Ford Scorpio. But uh, the uh, event at the moment belongs to uh, Dave Wilson with those magical uh, low six second passes of his. And I'm sure he's going to be looking for another low six on this particular outing as his uh, son looks on there just to see that dad's A-OK -okay and the motor's running fine a good hard launch there and he's streaking away from Alan Packman towards the top end of the track and we wait for the times and speeds to come through and just look at this for Dave Wilson 6.210 at 222 miles an hour to a losing 7.646 at 147 well, our final run here in the Super Pro shootout belongs to uh, Dog Bond, who just fairly motors through the top end there, 7.022 at 190 miles an hour. And he should have been going up against uh, Lindsay Ducard, who uh, unfortunately uh, we see him being backed up uh, at the back of the start line area. Uh, unfortunately, he was shut down with uh, a leaking fuel pipe on top of the motor. And of course, with uh, something like that and about 10 grand's worth of motor behind him, then uh, it could have been very costly indeed for that particular race car driver. Well, we now move swiftly on to the semi-finals of our uh, sportsman shootout here at the park. And this is the first semi-final in Group A featuring uh, Nick Sefton with the Bartlett-sponsored uh, Reliant Bodied uh, Competition Altered going up against uh, Al Golding's uh, Vauxhall Forenza calls it grounds for divorce. Whether he's uh, telling us a statement or not, we don't really know. But a good even start there from uh, both sides. Uh, Nick Sefton and uh, Al Golding but it looks like the little Viva has uh, got uh, the slight horsepower advantage as uh, the little Ryan Robin is trying to chase him down at the top end of the track and it looks like it's Nick Sefton that's going to go through to the final there 10.74 plays to 11.54 so uh, it looks like it's Nick Sefton's little Reliant Robin that's going to be the first uh, of our uh, finalists in Group A and who's uh, going to meet in the final? Is it going to be uh, Roy Lewis with his uh, hot rod slingshot? Or is it going to be uh, Gary Petley there in the big and red Corvette? We'll just have to wait and see. As uh, both drivers there launching hard from the line, and we're going to have take a look at this at, from both angles, once from behind and once from our uh, camera position on the grass bank. But it looks like uh, Gary Petley there is, uh, is going to uh, steal away the win from Roy Lewis unless he can claw it back at the top end of the track. But it looks like it's going to be Gary Petley who is going to go through to the uh, final to meet uh, Nick Sefton. Well, we now progress to uh, Group B and we've got uh, Paul Mitchell with his uh, Buick GS just burning out in front of us here. And he's going up against Chris Isaacs with his uh, 1948 Ford Prefix. And once again, we're going to have a look at uh, this particular start from both angles. And it looks pretty even from, uh, from the rear of the uh, camera position. But as you can see from that particular shot, uh, Mitchell has got the slight uh, horsepower advantage there from the line. But uh, I think I did detect a, a red light on the tree. But uh, nevertheless, Chris Isaacs is going to go through to the next round uh, with that 10.92 uh, to a losing 11.30. Uh, well, this is the uh, second uh, semi-final featuring Paul Wright up against uh, Day Southworth. And uh, it looks like uh, Paul Wright is uh, in the lead at the moment, but uh, as he goes through to the top end of the track, there's a red on the board there, so it's Day Southworth that's going to uh, meet Chris Isaacs in that uh, all-important final of Group B. Well, the first of the semi-finals for Group C is going to uh, pitch Harold Dalton's uh, beautiful-looking Porsche Speedster up against Faye Fisher with her uh, Baker Lou line-sponsored uh, Comp Altered. Calls it the Lucky Fish this time round. And uh, we see it again from uh, both angles on our uh, camera positions. And uh, it looks like it's going to be uh, a good, uh, clean sweep there for Harold Dalton. 
but, but streaking past in the eyes there it's Faye Fisher that's going to uh, steal away the win and going to be our first of the finalists and uh, we'll wait to see who she's going to meet because uh, we've now got uh, on the line Paul Hughes with the Outrage 2 VW Beetle Funny Car and you can see from the little message on the roof hatch there running in please do not pass because they've had a, a lot of problems with this particular car over the weekend and also leading up to the event with a uh, broken turbocharger on the uh, Saturday and of course they've worked long into the night with this particular car so they're spelling a message out to uh, their opponent on the other side of the uh, race track so uh, Paul Hughes there brings it forward to the line the uh, Brian Burrow sponsor car he should have been going up against Martin Grove but uh, looks like Grove isn't going to answer this uh, semi-final call and uh, Paul Hughes just strokes it through to the top end of the track just pulls the chute in a big way and an 8.68 there for that particular car and just slotting itself into the uh, running order here is uh, a rerun of uh, one of our earlier super gas uh, races between Tony Gransden and uh, Peter Lane. So uh, obviously there's been a, a bit of uh, technical infringement on the uh, previous running of this particular race between these two drivers. And of course we have to find a winner uh, to uh, go through to the uh, semi-finals. So it's Peter Lane in the left-hand lane, the ear-splitting Loudon Boomer Camaro, and he's going up against the chassis craft shop of uh, Tony Granston there in the right-hand lane. And of course, uh, once again, we see it from both angles from our uh, West Yorkshire TV cameras. But uh, who's he going to be? It looks like Peter Lane is going to uh, nose over first, but it's going to be very tight indeed. And it is indeed Peter Lane that goes through to the uh, next round in the uh, Camaro's Unlimited Super Gas uh, Showdown. Well, this is the uh, final, the uh, semi-finals in Group D, and it's Simon Oxbury with this uh, beautiful-looking 70s styled Ford Maverick. Another car that's uh, steeped in uh, drag racing history here in the UK. And of course Simon just picked up this car uh, only during the winter and has done a lot of work indeed together with his uh, father. And he's going up against Jim Bowen with the uh, Beetlejuice uh, VW Beetle there. So you can see a good even start from both of those cars and his V8 versus his uh, four cylinder power there. And it looks like uh, Jim Bowen is uh, showing a good turn of speed at the top end, but it looks like it's gonna be Simon Oxbury that uh, steals away the win there at the top end of the track. And who's he going to meet out of this final pairing in the uh, Sportsman Shootout here at the park? Is it going to be uh, Dave Billadu with the all-fired-up uh, Plymouth? Or is it going to be this man in front of us at the moment, Brian Huxley, with the can-do-sponsored Colt Sapporo? Of course, uh, Brian has been round the tracks for many, many years, particularly here at uh, Avon Park because he only just lives down the road in Cheltenham. So he'd like to see himself in the final, but... Uh, He's got a lot of work to do into try and catching up that Plymouth at the top end of the track. But uh, this time round, I don't think he's going to make up the uh, handicap start at all. And it is indeed going to be Dave Billadu who's going to go through to the uh, final to meet Simon Oxbury. So that completes our uh, finalists for the uh, Sportsman Shootout and we await for the next batch of action to unfold but it looks like uh, we're going to be denied our finals here at the uh, shootout because it's raining and of course we can't uh, run any cars on such a slick surface that we've got here at the track and as you can see uh, all our officials and even our spectators here who want to see the finals run are helping out into trying to uh, dry the track out in between the showers you can see our uh, squeegees are uh, trying to disperse some of the water off the uh, racing lights not like normal motorsports where we uh, we normally run if it's raining rain shine or whatever if it rains for us in drag racing then that's it we have to stop because of course you've seen that a lot of our cars are uh, running on slick tires but uh, it looks like uh, young Andy Hill there is fairly confident that uh, he's going to put a run in but it uh, looks like one of our masters is saying every time he comes round it starts to rain and, and once again it's raining again 
so that the showers and I think the time element is going to beat us here at uh, the uh, at uh, Avon Park. And it's got, well, just look at that for uh, hardy souls in the stands there. It looks like uh, Wimbledon 92 all over again there. And of course, uh, we commend those uh, particular uh, spectators there because I'm sure they're going to go home with wet feet indeed. Well, it looks like the consensus is that uh, another cloud is uh, due to appear because as soon as we get one shower out the way, the sun comes out and then we get another shower out the way. And of course, uh, you can see our friends here from uh, West Yorkshire Television are also getting in on the act. But uh, I don't really think that we're going to see any more action here at all. But uh, of course, we, uh, we have to try our best and uh, our chief starter there uh, is just uh, having a word with some of our drivers and officials and well look you can see the weather is closing in once again just trying to get some of the uh, water off the uh, electrics there of uh, Simon Oxbury's car as we look at uh, Nick uh, Sefton's uh, Reliance bodied altered but uh, here's the clerk of the course to explain some of the reasons I'm putting you down the track but it ain't going to be dry, no. it ain't, you ain't going to shift it and get it dry by then. The track itself is drying, but there's a lot of surface, there's a lot of water still on the track. Yeah. And I'll be honest, it's going to be absolute rubbish traction wise, you know that. Well, for those who have remained in the stands, and uh, I appreciate that, unfortunately we can't put anything down that track at all, we're going to have to call this event off. The track is too waterlogged at the top end to put any big stuff down there whatsoever. So we're very, very sorry indeed. It's just one of those things. So we're going to have to call an end to shootout number two. We appreciate that uh, you remain behind to see a final winner, but I'm afraid it's not to be. Well, as you've just heard from our uh, track announcer there, unfortunately we've run right out of time. The weather had beaten us on that particular day, so we're going to wrap the programme up with a few of the highlights that took place at the Good Guys UK shootout number two, and obviously memorable highlights to a lot of the racers, and of course to all the fans that visited Ivan Park on that day.